July 11 edition of PFTOT, two weeks away from the return of PFT Live to Peacock, Sirius XM85, Sky Sports, and wherever you get your podcasts or however you digest your NFL information. And there's so much out there. We appreciate you giving us some of your time. I'm not going to go nearly as long as I did on Friday. Friday was like an hour. See, if I skip a day, I feel guilty when it's time to do it again. So I end up talking longer. I know it would be better to just do a half hour a day instead of an hour every other day. So with that said, my goal is to do it most a half hour today, which means, of course, I've now destined myself to be prattling on 60 minutes from now. Let's get to it. At some point today, the button will be pressed by both the NFL and the NFL Players Association's lawyers sending their written briefs to Judge Sue L. Robinson in the Deshaun Watson case. Today's the day that she identified at the end of the hearing, 11 days ago, that the parties will submit their normal, customary post-hearing briefs. This happens all the time. In a situation like this, where it's kind of an arbitration, even though it's a former federal judge, she's the one that was hired by the league and the union to resolve these issues as to whether or not a player should be disciplined, and if so, for how long. She wanted the briefs today. She will then take them and she will render a decision. I don't think it'll be a quick decision. She won't want it to be a quick decision. She needs people to think she took enough time. She may already know what she's going to do, but she's going to want people to think she took enough time to do it. She's going to want to read this information very carefully. And usually what happens is you'll see a lot of the concepts from the brief submitted by the party that wins end up being reflected in her final decision. And ultimately we will have, hopefully, a written decision that we can all read and digest and understand. The league needs that. Good luck reconciling it with the absolute lack of transparency in the Washington investigation. But of course, what they would say is, well, there's no one here that requested anonymity. There's no one who requested to be anonymous. And of course, if someone did ask to be anonymous, all you got to do is change their name, not completely hide everything. They need the information to come out here. They need people to understand what happened in this case if there's going to be a punishment that falls far short of what the NFL has asked for, indefinite suspension of at least one year. They need people to be able to buy in, to understand, to get it. If at the end of the day, Judge Robinson decides the four game or a six game suspension. Now, the parties can work out a settlement between now and whenever she issues her decision or after she issues her decision. That's still on the table. People still are confused by that. How, how can this be? It happens. It happens. Anytime that you see the announcement of discipline on a player with an acknowledgement that the player is waiving his appeal rights, that is a different way of saying we've reached an agreement. We have a settlement. We've compromised. We've negotiated. That can still happen here at any time. And there's nothing untoward about it. See, the problem is This case is attracting so much attention from people who don't really pay attention otherwise to the NFL disciplinary process. You have a lot of people popping off on either side of this issue. The pro-Deshaun, anti-Deshaun side, whatever it is. Well, why is that? Why is that? That shouldn't be. And at some point, people just have to ignore the noise and do what they think is right and move this thing forward. And that's what will happen as of today. Written brief submitted. Judge Robinson takes it all under advisement. I think July 25 is when the window really opens with the possibility that on Friday, July 22, maybe if Judge Robinson is clued into the whole Friday afternoon bad news dump, maybe we get a ruling that help. Maybe we get it on Saturday night, the 23rd. That was what the NFL did when it decided to mobilize its forces to make sure people knew that the Deshaun Watson hearing was coming. So either way, a decision is coming, barring a settlement that can happen either before or after the decision. And remember, if any discipline at all is imposed on Deshaun Watson, either side can appeal to the commissioner who has final say, but he is bound by the findings of fact made by Judge Robinson. All right. Jimmy Garoppolo has made some news recently because he's now the guy in the batter's box. He's no longer in the on-deck circle. Baseball metaphor. That's about all I know at this point about baseball. I know a lot more. I know a lot more about baseball than I let on because I was a huge baseball fan way back in the day. It's been 30 years. It's been ever since the Pirates lost to the Braves game seven in LCS 1992 that I abandoned baseball. But batter's box on deck, not a high-end concept. Not some some of the analytics that we worry about with all that. I I don't even want to start down that path. Anyway, anyway, what was I talking about? Jimmy Garoppolo. 
some news made recently about his potential destination, and somebody was popping off about the idea of Jimmy Garoppolo to the Buccaneers. And Don Yee, his agent, basically came out and said, that's false. Look, why in the hell would Jimmy Garoppolo go to the Buccaneers? Why would he? First of all, the Buccaneers aren't going to touch his salary at $25 million, and they're not going to give the 49ers what they want. But even if Jimmy Garoppolo was cut today, why would he go back up Tom Brady for 2022 at whatever the Buccaneers would pay him when he could possibly go somewhere else and at least compete to be the starter? Houston, I think the Texans are waiting for him. I really do. I think the Texans may have been the team that was poised to trade for him. Remember at one point it slipped out. They had a trade ready to go, and then Jimmy G gets shoulder surgery, and it fell apart. And when they presented that, there was kind of a weird unspoken vibe that they believe that once he's cleared, that that, that possibility reemerges. Well, everybody else that was looking for a quarterback that we know of addressed their situation. The Texans didn't. They've been selling this idea that Davis Mills is their guy. Davis Mills is their guy. A lot of tentacles between Garoppolo and the Texans front office dating back to their mutual time with the New England Patriots. Nick Casario, the GM of the Texans, was the, the primary personnel table setter for Bill Belichick back when Garoppolo was drafted via round two in 2014. So it just makes too much sense. I think he's going to end up with the Texans. And this Buccaneers stuff is just nonsense. And look, I'm, I'm not one to turn up my nose at any news that may come my way in July. It really is difficult. And I'm not going to, yeah, it's funny. As we look for news, and I'm not calling anyone out here, although I guess I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just speaking my truth. When you look for news this time of year, there's a lot of made up filler, nonsense, waste of time, crap that people are putting together. We're not going to waste your time with that stuff. We're looking for actual news or analysis that is germane to what's going on in the NFL. We don't want to do some listicle or made up thing. No, no, no. No, I'd, 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 I'd rather, as a wise man, advise me over the weekend, go get in my pool. Uh, we'll see who ultimately is in the pool for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it's going to be the Texans. Wild ass guess. Now, if Deshaun Watson is somehow suspended for the whole year, maybe the Browns get interested in Jimmy G. But I think he's going to end up with the Texans. And, don't, and now, somebody out there, NFL Insider, says Jimmy Garoppolo going to the Texans. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, if I had to throw a dart, if I had to make a guess, I'd say he's going to end up a member of the Houston Texans. It makes too much sense. We'll see how it plays out. I don't know where Lamar Jackson's going to go. And look... I'm a Lamar Jackson fan. I think he's one of the great quarterbacks in the NFL. And I've been saying for over a year, he needs to get paid. He needs his contract. He needs an agent, a good agent, to get him the right contract. And I've suggested that the Ravens offer to pay the fee. Because I think at the end of the day, Lamar Jackson doesn't have an agent because he doesn't want to write that check. That's the Richard Sherman, Russell Okung approach. They resent the idea of having to write a check every year. For that 1%, 2%, 3%. If it just came out of your game checks, you wouldn't notice it like taxes. You notice this because you got to write the check. What am I paying for here? What am I really paying for? What did you do? You made a few phone calls. It's easy to undermine and downplay what a good agent does. A good agent puts you in position to get your contract. Good agent knows the market. And it's not that much in the grand scheme of things. Until it's time to write the check. Then it's a lot. 1% of 40 million is $400,000, I think. Yes, it's $400,000. That's a big check to write, big check to write. So I say all that because over the weekend, someone noticed that Lamar Jackson had changed both his Twitter profile and Instagram profile to include what turned out to be an image from the movie How High. A guy had a grill that says, I need money. So it's focused on those those metal teeth saying, I need money. At a time when Lamar Jackson is supposedly negotiating with the Ravens on his own, he posts that message. And then when he's asked about it at his youth fun day, fourth annual Lamar Jackson fun day, he's asked about it by a reporter. I, oh, I, didn't, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Why would anyone think, what? come on, Lamar. Come on. And this is a general admonition to all professional athletes and celebrities out there. We know you want attention, and that's fine. It's fine to want attention. 
but don't think, don't, don't act like we're dumb. Don't, 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 don't. Ah, well, why would they think that? Why would anyone think that is a message to the Ravens when I post, I need money on my social media pages? Why would anyone think it's a message to my current employer, the one that has been trying to give me money for more than a year and that I have been holding off, but now all of a sudden I'm at the table and coincidentally check my Twitter and Instagram profile for the message, I need money. There have been several athletes over the years where I've made this point. The, hey, everybody, look at me. What the hell are you looking at? Wanting attention on their own terms, reserving the right to say they are wrong to give me this attention because I don't want this attention. It's fine. You got the right to do it, but we have the right to react to it. We have the right to say this is kind of stupid. This is kind of childish. You either lack self-awareness or you're just trolling us. So either Lamar Jackson lacks the self-awareness to realize the connection between changing his social media profiles to the message, I need money, and reasonable people looking at it saying that must be a message to the Ravens, or at a minimum, is it a message? Raising the question, is it a message? So don't act like we're, we're being unreasonable. It's a reasonable reaction, Lamar. So either there's no self-awareness or it's just trolling. Kind of like he did when... Hollywood Brown got traded and he reacted on social media like it was news to him when it wasn't news to him. Again, people can tweet whatever they want. They can put whatever they want on their profile, but the rest of us are going to react to it. That's how it goes. That's one of the bags you carry when you are a high profile NFL player. Don't act surprised that people react to anything you say and do, especially when the message is, I need money. He also said that he hopes to have his new contract by the time training camp opens. He says that a holdout isn't on his mind. It shouldn't be on his mind. Look, the team's ready to pay him. The problem is, the problem is, when it's time to sit down and talk, you're trying to speak the same language here. And the problem is sometimes difficult things need to be said by the player on behalf of the player or by the team on behalf of the team. And when the messages are being communicated directly between player and team, that can get dicey. The player can come off looking like he thinks too much of himself. Well, somebody's got to stand up and make his case. Somebody's got to say he's great, that he deserves more than Deshaun Watson. If Deshaun Watson can get a five-year, $230 million fully guaranteed contract with 24 pending allegations of sexual misconduct during massages. Lamar Jackson, who's never done anything that anyone can question and is an MVP, how is that not the starting point for his conversation? See, it's one thing for Lamar to say it. It's another thing for an agent to say it on his behalf. And I remember a few weeks ago when Lamar Jackson spoke at the team's mandatory minicamp and said, those other guys don't matter. I'm me. No, no, no. Those other guys do matter. That's how the market's determined. Don't say that because the team's going to want to say, that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. That's nobody's doing that anymore. Oh, the market's changed. No, no. Bull crap. The market is what the market is. Josh Allen raised the bar. Dak Prescott raised the bar. Deshaun Watson raised the bar. Lamar Jackson raises the bar because Lamar Jackson is worth it. He needs an agent to make that case for him. It's been awkward. It's been messy. We'll see where it goes from here. And there's a risk. And look, whatever, this is the other side of it too, for the Ravens and for Jackson. That contract's going to be scrutinized heavily, heavily scrutinized. What kind of deal was done here? Was it a good deal? Does it advance the cause for other quarterbacks that are going to be looking for contracts? Russell Wilson's going to set a new bar at some point. Joe Burrow is going to be looking to set a new bar. There's going to be a stream of guys every year, every year. So where's Lamar Jackson fit? Is he going to be an outlier, an aberration because his deal's so bad? Or is he going to be in line with what everyone else has done? That's why Steve Bishotti was one of the first owners to publicly bellyache about the Deshaun Watson contract. He knew what it meant for him. He's got a quarterback who's injury prone because of the way he plays the position. And now he's going to have to tie up five years of guaranteed money for that quarterback. And and I know that every player wants all contracts to be fully guaranteed. And 
for the first round picks now, one through 32, the four years are fully guaranteed. But when you start down the road of fully guaranteeing veteran contracts, you know what that leads to? That leads to a world where teams are carrying on their books and on their salary cap guys who aren't getting it done anymore, guys who may not be starting, guys who may not be on the team. So the guys who are playing, there's less money for them. And, and look, my general position on the salary cap is it's for the team to figure it out. But if you're going to do a five-year fully guaranteed contract for a guy who may end up playing three years and then not be good enough anymore because of an accumulation of injuries and he's still getting paid, makes it hard to pay the guys who are out there getting it done. So it's one of the challenges of the Lamar Jackson contract. Will he get five years fully guaranteed? He should. He should. Will he? We'll see. Speaking of money, before I get to some of your questions, let me address the new name for Heinz Field. And there was no name that originated with a corporation of any NFL stadium more perfect than Heinz Field. That was the name from the moment it opened. It didn't go through that awkward period of being Cowboys Stadium before it was AT&T Stadium while Jerry Jones was looking for the best deal for his naming rights. It was Heinz Field, Heinz is Pittsburgh, the two big ketchup bottles. Anytime the team got into the red zone, the ketchup bottles physically moved down and the graphics fill up with ketchup. It was perfect. It was perfect. It was the perfect corporate shill naming rights deal. And it was perfect for Heinz. 57 million for 20 years, 2.85 million a year. That, my friends, is a bargain. So now, 20 year deal ends. They did a one year band aid. Art Rooney, the president of the Steelers, expressed optimism back in February that they would find a way to renew it. The Steelers grabbed the money. The St- now, look, I don't want to hear anybody complain about players grabbing money because you're going to have to deal with all Steelers fans and everyone in Pittsburgh this monstrosity of a name. Acrisure. That's the new name, reportedly. Our friend Andrew Filipponi of 93.7 The Fan reported last night, Heinz Field is out, reported on Monday. Acrisure Stadium is in. An insurance conglomerate out of Michigan. The Steelers grabbed the bag. The Steelers didn't do a hometown deal with UPMC. I thought it was just going to be UPMC. UPMC is everywhere else up there. Whatever Acrisure is paying, probably a lot more than whatever the top number for UPMC was. And the Steelers decided we're going to go grab the bag and that's fine. They got every right to do it, but don't get mad at players when they do it. Acrisure stadium. It really does sound made up as MDS pointed out. And I stole the concept from him in the story I wrote. It sounds more made up than Vandalay industries. Acrisure stadium. Never heard of it. Now you have, that's the money. It was invested by Acrisure, already working for Acrisure. See, you'll see companies that want to develop a significant national footprint. And that's the way you do it. You pay, and who knows what it's going to be. SoFi is paying $20 million a year to have the naming rights for the stadium where the Chargers and Rams play. Now, look, they get themselves into into the stream of consciousness every week because the Chargers or the Rams typically are hosting a game every week, except when it's spread out Thursday, Sunday, whatever. But SoFi's got two teams, so you've got 20 games a year being played there. You got 10 at Acrisure Stadium. I don't know. It's going to at least be 10 million a year. It's probably going to be 15, 17 million a year. I'm going to go, I'm going to set the over-under at 16.9. That's the over-under. Betting odds may be available soon. We'll see. 16.9 million is the over-under on what Acrisure is paying to take over the naming rights in Heinz Field. And I just think this one's going to backfire. I think the people in Pittsburgh are not going to like it. I don't like it. Heinz Field was perfect. Acrisure Stadium is anything but. Unless Acrisure wants to sponsor PFT Live, then I could get used to I get used to that name fairly, fairly quickly, as quickly as the Steelers will be getting used to Acrisure Stadium as the new home of the team. Let's see what we got here. Questions. Now I made it clear that I'm only going to answer five or seven, which probably means I'll answer about 16 or 17, but no, I'm only going to, I'm only going to do the best of the best today. I looked through them earlier. Let's see what we got here. Um, And I'm going to skip some of these. I'm sorry, PFT PM posse. You you got some intricate detailed questions and they're good questions, but uh, uh, I'm going to be, and what'll happen is you'll ask them again later this week. So 
I'll, I'll, maybe I'll get to them later this week. Here's one from the PFTPM policy account. Should the Texans now be investigated by the NFL since they're the subject of lawsuits related to Sean Watson and their known involvement, allegedly, in helping him avoid legal trouble with an NDA, a ho- high-end hotel room, and knowledge related to the team's um, massage therapist? Look, I, I think it's a fair question. The Texans were sued two weeks ago for what they knew or should have known and what they did or failed to do when it comes to protecting individuals from being preyed upon, allegedly, by Deshaun Watson. Should there be an investigation of the Texans by the league? There should be. There should be. Hey, what happened when there was a fresh investigation made against Daniel Snyder back in February before the U.S. House Oversight Committee? The commissioner said at his Super Bowl press conference, a team can't investigate itself. So why would the Texans investigate themselves on whether or not their director of security violated protocols, violated the personal conduct policy, violated some other rule by not mobilizing. See, what what possibly should have been done there, possibly, if not probably, the director of security should have called the league, involved the league. We have a potential personal conduct policy issue here that I'm aware of. Somebody is on social media saying that they can expose Deshaun Watson. Expose him for what? Now, maybe it should have started with a conversation between Deshaun Watson and the director of security. What what is this person talking about here? What is she saying she may expose you for? But yeah, I think this is something the league needs to look into. And of course they will, and they won't release the report because someone along the way will seek anonymity. Neil watches PFT. Should Sam Darnold try harder to move on from the Panthers and find a place where he can earn a second contract? Is he smarter at this point to take the bird in the hand sit tight with his 18 million and hope to sign as a backup somewhere next off season. He's now in the position Baker Mayfield was in 18.8 million fully guaranteed. He gets that if he does nothing. And we've seen the precedent be set by Baker Mayfield, giving up 3.3 million that can be earned back in incentives to get a ticket to another team. Donald has to ask himself, what's my objective here? Is my objective to get my 18.8 and then try to continue my career as a free agent next year? Is my objective to get cut, get traded, go elsewhere and try to get a fresh start? I think his best play at this point is take the 18.8, go out and compete with Baker Mayfield, be ready to play in the event that Mayfield gets injured at some point or ends up being ineffective and hope for the best next year. You know, Donald made four years of salaries, the third overall pick in the draft, not as big as it used to be, but still big. And now 18.8 on top of it. I think for him, the best play is go along, get along, and then we'll see what opportunities present themselves next March. But I could see Darnold being one of those guys that gets a contract, a decent contract to go to a team that may be looking to draft a quarterback. So he'll be the number one guy. He'll be QB1. Remember when Andy Dalton was QB1 in Chicago? He'll be QB1 until he isn't, until that team drafts somebody, just like Mitchell Trubisky this year. And then you got a chance to prove yourself. But have we really seen enough from Darnold in four years to think he's going to be a lifelong starter? Or is he going to be a guy who slides into that veteran role, hangs around for a few years until the phone doesn't ring anymore? And it's look, it's not a bad living. Three, four, five million a year to hold a clipboard to mentor a young quarterback. It's pretty good money. It's pretty good money. And that may be where Darnold is heading. So I'd take the 18.8 and wait for an opportunity to play and do my absolute best when that opportunity arises. And then we see what happens next March. Neil watches PFT. Should Pete Carroll be more concerned than he is about the quarterback room? I remember during last season, there was talk of him being on the hot seat. Is it fathomable that he improves from seven and 10 with Drew Locker, Geno Smith? I think Pete Carroll wants to prove to the world that he can be as competitive without Russell Wilson as he was with him. It was an ugly divorce. Ego is involved. Russell Wilson always wanted the offense to be tailored to him, to have the offense go through him. And I know there's that group out there that'll say, Every offense goes to every quarterback. That's not the way it works. And Seattle had Russell Wilson as a piece of a broader machine. He wants to be the machine. In Denver, he will be the machine. In Seattle, they're sticking with the machine with Drew Locke or Geno Smith. And I I really do think that's why I think they weren't really in it for Baker Mayfield. I think Pete Carroll would love nothing more than have a competitive team with Geno Smith 
as the starting quarterback. I think that's what he'd like. And hot seat, not hot seat, here's the reality. That team's getting sold. At some point after May of 2024, that team is getting sold because before May of 2024, that's when 10% of the proceeds go to the state of Washington, which means it's not getting sold before then. After May of 2024, it will be sold. And all this talk about the team is not for sale, I believe, as we said last week, it's just an effort to drive up the price. It creates leverage. Sorry, team's not for sale. In other words, offer me more and maybe it will be for sale. Tom Marshall, hey, Red Zone UK, will Jimmy Garoppolo have to agree to eat some of his salary to enable the trade? His salary at this point is irrelevant. Unless the 49ers are going to go completely stupid and pay him $25 million to be the backup to Trey Lance, he's going to have to eat some of that salary at some point. That's why it's important for him to bring this to a head now. Get a trade now. Get cut now. His worst case scenario is, as I've said many times before, Compete for the job with Trey Lance. Lose the competition to Trey Lance and be told by the 49ers in late August, early September, hey, Jimmy, you know, we can't pay you $25 million to be the backup to Trey Lance. We're not crazy. We've done some crazy stuff at the quarterback position, but we're not crazy. We're not that crazy to pay you $25 million to warm the bench. We'll pay you 10 Or you get cut. And at that point on the calendar, where does he go? So... He's not making 25 million this year. He's not. The only way he makes 25 million is if he's cut and he signs a multi-year deal with another team and it pays him 25 million this year as part of the signing bonus and whatnot. Then he can save some face and say, hey, I still got my 25 million. Yeah, but you're not getting 25 million a year. We'll see. I still think it's going to be the Texans and maybe they will pay. Look at the market right now. The top of the market's 50. Maybe the Texans would pay him 25 million a year on average. Maybe they would. Uh, let's see. JC says, no point in asking questions. You only answer the same six people's questions. Well, I answer the best questions. So JC, you got mentioned. JC Karm, for your editorial comment about the fact that I only answer the questions submitted by six people, I have mentioned a seventh person. Let's see what else we have here. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, 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 there's some I'm going to skip over. Can't do it. Uh, oh boy. All right. I think that's everything. Here's an observation, not a question. Bark twice says the Steelers new stadium name is trash. Here's one more. Marco Meyer, 1976, not one of the usual six who get answered questions. He has a question about the 12, the 12 persons to whom the NFL spoke, who have accusations against Deshaun Watts. Remember, there were 24 cases, two others who didn't file suit, 12 people that were spoken to by the NFL as part of the Deshaun Watts investigation. The question is, how is it possible the NFL only looked into 12 cases? I know some women wouldn't speak to them after they allegedly mistreated some of the other women, but the New York Times found 66 in a 17-month period of time. Seems like a terrible job and a terrible look by the NFL. I don't know, and I'd love to know. I'd love to know why they decided to only talk to 12. Did the other 12 say, we're not talking? Did they try? Did they decide we don't need the information? Did they vet the cases before actually talking to them and decide these cases aren't credible? Remember, this was one of the 12 cases that they focused on before they whittled to five. The report from last week that there are recorded comments from the woman's adult son that would undermine her claim Tony Busby went on the record and said, I don't represent this person. In other words, I vetted this person and decided not to offer her representation. So I don't know why they only looked at 12, but, but that's where we need to understand the difference between full-blown court of public opinion, 24 lawsuits, two other claims, 66 women who provided massage therapy services over a 17-month period, according to Jenny Ventus of the New York Times. That's the disconnect between NFL only talking to 12, only presenting five different reality. Based on those five, did he violate the personal conduct policy? Not 24, not 66. There's been allegations made by Tony Buzz, but there were more than 100. Five. One, two, three, four, five. What does Sue Robinson think 
of those five? What's the quality of the evidence? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it so bad that maybe Judge Robinson said, I'm not even going to consider that one. We'll find out. We'll find out. The week of July 25th, my guess, please, please, clickbait website, don't write the article. NFL Insider says a decision is coming July 25. That's my guess. If you want to make an article based on my guess, be my guest. July 25, to me, is when the window flies open to find out what happens. But to Sean Watson, for now, the window slams shut. We're done. Until tomorrow, unless nothing's going on tomorrow, in which case I'll skip tomorrow and then ramble for a full hour on Wednesday because I feel bad for skipping tomorrow. Either way, have a great Monday. Check us out all day long at profootballtalk.com and we will talk to you again very soon. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.